appreciate you, Bishop. Don't you appreciate your pastors? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just uh, wonderful people. And uh, we, are, we are so glad that uh, they're a part of us. We're a part of them. We're a part of you. Yeah. And uh, so thank God for his goodness and his mercy. And see what God is doing here in uh, a New Hope is just a, an exciting thing for us. Now, I, I get to preach next Sunday at New Hope, but that's in Taft. <laughs> So, so anyway, we got a couple of new hopes. And I like new hope, don't you? I like that. Amen. I heard somebody that said the name of their church was New Hope. You know, this was years ago. He said, when I actually fall out, I say, no hope. <laughs> of course, he was kidding. But it's just, uh, I'm glad that, it, that we have hope. Yes. And it's not no hope. Right. It's new hope. Amen. It's so hope in the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his love and his mercy towards us. And uh, towards anyone that will humble themselves before God. Amen? Amen. And thank God for that hope. Sweetheart, I want you to just come. She's uh, having just a little bit of difficulty with her throat. That's why I'm going to. What a cool picture that is of us. <laughs> <laughs> that was like two years ago. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But anyway, um, I know you can hear me through this, but it is a joy for us to be here with you guys. It really is. Uh, when I got up this morning, I didn't think I was going to be able to come, but uh, I did. I made it. And like you said, here. it is better to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I would have probably felt good staying home and, and watching all these other programs on TV and you know, all the churches. But it's good to come and be Amen. in the presence of the Lord with all of you awesome ladies and men and children that are here today. God bless you. I was thinking of a story today. I wasn't going to talk very long, but you know me. I'm kind of like, <laughs> give me a mic and I'll go. You know? But I was thinking of, of sunflower seeds, uh, sunflowers. They're so beautiful. And and when, when the sun is shining, they're just, you know, got their heads up like that. Have you ever seen them out in the garden? Or they're just like that. But when it's a cloudy day and there's no sun, you know what they do? They meet together, they turn, and they face each other because they're gaining strength from each other. So this is what we do as children. Yes, God. When yes. we come to church, we're gaining strength Amen. with each other. What a joy to be here today. I'm expecting a good report for your mother. We've been praying for her since we found out last night that she was sick. And I go to the doctor tomorrow as well to see what's going on with my throat. I've had it for over a month or so now. So my kids, like she was saying on Facebook, your kid, my sons are really coming down on me. Well, that's what kids do. <laughs> my oldest son from Arizona said, Mom, that don't make me have to come over here and get you. <laughs> and I'm going, well, that's what it's going to take. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I promised I'd go to the doctor, so I'm going to the doctor. And I know that God's going to give me a good report because I believe his word. And so we're going to find out what's causing all of this, and I'm going to be healed. Amen. My heart is going to be healed. There's, you know, it just, it gets where I can't hardly breathe or anything, but I know God is my strength. He's my healer. What a joy to be here with you, precious Amen. people. We love you today. God bless you. Amen. Uh, I love that last song that you sang, Pastor. That, uh, that is a powerful, powerful uh, in my life, that, that verse is. And I, I love that. And I'm going to be speaking to you from uh, Psalm, Psalm 68. Psalm 68 this morning. If you want to go ahead and turn over there. I know that uh, God has been working wonderful miracles for you because that's the way He is. I like the song too that. Uh, that said he's a way maker, yes, a miracle yes. worker, amen. And uh, we, uh, we know that whatever's happening with uh, with uh, Sister Blasco and with my wife, God's going to take care of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of it so we're rejoicing the Lord. It's always a privilege to be with the pastor. And uh, we talk on the phone from time to time. And uh, it's always good to hear his voice. He's always got 
uh, uh, a good word and always has a right spirit when he answers it, even when I can hear a lawnmower in the background or <laughs> weed eater or whatever it is you're, you're, you're working with. But a uh, uh, hardworking, hardworking pastor. And uh, he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't have the church here so he can cut lawns. He cuts lawns so he can be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, that takes a, that takes a strong calling. I know what it is to work concrete and be a pastor. And uh, uh, it's, sometimes it's not easy, but uh, I know that you guys love him. And uh, the more people that you get in here, the less time you'll have to be, spend behind a long lawn. Amen? Amen? Because that's what it takes for it to grow. I know you folks give, and uh, but uh, the more people, the more finances are going to come in, and it's going to be good, Pastor. It's going to be good. I believe that. We pray for that every day, for you and for all our pastors, that God supplies every need according to His riches and glory. Amen. And that uh, Gail always speaks a, a, a word over them, that you're in the right place at the right time. All of those different things and the declarations that she makes over our pastor as we're praying together, she'll take off and start start uh, uh, making those declarations and, and the, the finances to come in, and we just make agreement together. Amen. 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 I want to I want to speak to you here this morning. Now I've heard I've heard brother, <laughs> I've heard your pastor brother William. I've heard him pastor William. I've heard you preach, and. I don't preach like him. I used to. <laughs> and it's not that it's not in me. It's uh, anyway. God, God knows. God knows what needs to be done, needs to be said. Yes. And we believe that God's going to move. Uh, such a powerful anointing in the worship yes. this morning, and the presence of God in this place is wonderful. We, just, we thank God for it. And, uh, Miranda, you are one of the best. Sister Miranda, you are one of the best drummers. Amen. In all the churches that we have here at Southern California. I know she does more than just drum. She probably drums on you a little bit. <laughs> you know, I got a feeling when you get home because you couldn't remember how long you've been here. <laughs> She's going to drum on you a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, God is so good to us, yes. isn't he? Yes. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Psalm 68 is a, is a powerful, powerful uh, uh, chapter in the book of Psalms. I love the book of Psalms as well. It's all the Bible, obviously. But uh, this one is, is special to me. And as we get into this message this morning, I believe God's going to speak to our hearts, our minds. I want to read the first four verses, and then we'll get, we'll get into it, okay? He said, Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. How many of you know exceedingly is more than just rejoicing? Right. It's more than that. Yeah. And uh, sing unto God, the fourth verse says, Sing unto God, sing praises to His name, extol Him who rides on the clouds by His name, Yah. Don't be afraid of the word Yah. It's just Jehovah. Okay, he's Jehovah. And rejoice before him. We believe you, Lord. Your word's truth. And because it is, you said it, Lord. You said we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Yes. So we believe that today. There are people that are going to get free in their praise. There are people that are going to get free in things that are issues that they're faced with, Father God, because of your word. We trust you for it, Father. We walk out of this building. We are going to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 
And this is a, it's a, this is a powerful, as I've said, it's a powerful song. And uh, this song, these first four verses, is what was spoken in, in the uh, children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. Every time that God wanted to move the people on to another place, you know, they didn't just go from, <laughs> from Egypt. And you, you know the story. They didn't go from Egypt into the Canaan's land. They just didn't do that because they didn't want to. And uh, they were relying on, on the provision that God is, was providing for them for one thing. And uh, they thought the giants were, they thought they had giants over there in Jericho. They could have been in there in two weeks. Are you hearing me? Yeah. They could have crossed over the Jordan in, in just a couple of weeks. And let me tell you something. I know that there's a lot of, a lot of uh, things that have been said about Jordan being uh, a type of heaven, but it's not. I don't think heaven has giants. Yeah. We're not going to fight any wars. There's no walled cities except the city. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, it, it, I don't think it's a type of heaven. It's a type of our everyday life. Yes. What we go through, we face enemies. Amen. Children of Israel faced enemies all the time. They fought a lot of battles to get to where that they needed to be. And God, God was gracious to them and uh, proved that He was a God that would never leave them and never forsake them because He, he didn't. They were the ones who turned their back on Him. But this is what was spoken. When they, when they, uh, uh, God wanted to move them to another position, whether it was from A to B to B, C, wherever it is, to get them. And you know, they marched around the, the, the uh, they went around the, uh, the mountain several times, 40 years to be exact, before they really entered in. And so, but God would move them from place to place for whatever reason. How many of you know that sometimes God moves us? I'm not talking about from yeah. this church to another church. Yeah. I'm talking about He wants to move us spiritually right. closer and closer to Him. Yeah. But when when the, uh, this would happen, when this would take place, and the uh, and they would go to go to move, one of the things that would take place is there would be the priests would get on a high point in the uh, the encampment where they were. And uh, I'm sure, Pastor, that you've talked about the, the tabernacle and different things. So I, I, I know that you, you, most of you people are familiar with what I'm talking about. There was tents that were all around the tabernacle in each tribe. They all was in the same place. Mm -hmm. But they would get to a high point, and they would declare it. They would say, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, and those that hate him flee before him. Then they knew. And if they couldn't hear that, they'd take the ram's horn. And they would blow the ram's horn. Will you bear with me? Yeah. Go ahead. Huh? Let's see what happens. This is a real ram's horn from Israel. <laughs> She's still got voice enough to give me from the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to do that again. <laughs> children of Israel heard it. <laughs> What's going on here? Especially for the first time. But they knew that right. that was a signal that they needed to start packing up their tent, right. getting their families together, and be ready to move. Because you know, God led them by the pillar of fire by night. Amen? Amen. Amen. And a cloud by day. He was in the cloud. He was in the fire. Yes. What the scripture says. Right. And so when you begin to think about that, <laughs> they had forced air heating in those cold desert nights because he led them by the fire. Yeah. And they stood over the tabernacle by the fire at night. But in the daytime, they had a cloud. 
Then they had air conditioning yeah. in the hot <laughs> desert days. Amen? Amen. Think about it. He took care of everything. God thought of yeah. everything for them. For the, the clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. They had food to eat even though they complained about it. Huh? Yeah. Isn't it amazing the manna that, that God provided for them? Pretty soon they, well, they just couldn't trust God enough. And Moses said, just gather. This is God's word. Just gather as much as your family can eat for 24 hours. That's it. No yeah, more. Right. Yeah. But there were so many of them that went ahead and gathered it. And after that day was over with, it rotted. It wasn't any good for them to eat. Right. So that's manna from heaven. Yeah. God sent that food down for them to eat. And of course, they got tired of just eating manna. And they wanted flesh. They wanted meat. And God sends the quail, you know, three foot deep. All through the camp. All of those different things that God did for them to provide for them. And finally came to the point where he said, I'm tired of this. I'm just going to kill them all. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And Moses says, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Kill me, but don't kill them. Yeah. That was his love. That's the shepherd's heart. Amen? Yeah. I said, that's the shepherd's heart. Yeah. And uh, we know that God didn't kill them all, but <laughs> there was a few of them got swallowed up by the earth because they, they just was not obedient in doing what they were supposed to be doing. And they were against everything that God was trying to take them into. Right. They were trying to stay out. Yeah. So thank God for his goodness and his mercy to lead us on from, from point to point yeah. so that we can be where God wants us to be. He wants, us to, he wants you to be closer to Him by the end of this year than you are right now. Come on. Yeah. He wants you to be in a place and a position where His presence can lead you. Come on. Because yeah. you have the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah. I, I mean, I know, and you all, you all know that, that the, the Ark of the Covenant stood for the presence of God. Yeah. Because that's where God's presence was. Right. Amen? Amen? And when the Ark started moving... The clouds started moving, or the fire started moving, if it was at night, and and they would move. They would move together. Why? Because that was God's presence, and they needed to stay near God's presence in order to keep the right kind of direction going in their life. Amen. Amen. We need God's presence to lead us, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is now like the ark. Yeah. In fact, if you if you could walk up now, listen, folks. The ark is not anything like, it isn't anything like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is. <laughs> Amen? I said, it's nothing, it's nothing like that. It's not in some warehouse over there in Germany or in, in, in America here someplace where it's got a burnt hole in the side of it and all of that because God's presence burned it there and, and all of that. I mean, that was a good story, but that was about it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, but but here's here's what I uh, what I want you to know. Right now, if if the Ark of the Covenant was sitting here, I mean the Ark of the Covenant, the one that they built in the wilderness, that God said, "My presence is going to dwell here." If it was sitting right here, right now, you could pick it up and put it under your arm and walk off. Of it. Yeah, it's not going to kill you. Right. Amen? Amen. Why? Because you have become the yes. ark of God. Right. You carry the presence of God in you yes. right now. Yes. Amen? Amen? But how many of you know that there had to be people that said, you know, I'm tired of moving. There had to be some, there had to be some uh, wife that said, Abby, you can go if you want to. I'm staying here. The kids are settled in school. Everything's just fine. And so we, we just got the house set up to where we, you know, right. the tent set up to where we wanted. And we're not going to be moving. So, so okay, okay. So they move out. And there were, without a doubt, there were more than one family out of all of those uh, millions of people that decided to stay back. But as soon as, as the ark began to move, the presence of God began to move. How many of you know it was also their protection? Right. Yeah. I said it was their protection. Yeah. Yeah. And as it, he was, uh, the, the ark would begin to move and the presence of God would begin to move after the horn was blown and let God arise, let his enemies be scattered and let those of heaven flee before him. Amen? Amen. Amen. When those were said, when those words were spoken, and they, did, uh, if they gave them a certain amount of time to get things ready to move. But when it started moving, and you were left behind, 
there, you know, there was, everything was fine for a few days. But then here comes a bunch of marauding uh, Amalekites. That's good. Yeah. How many of you know they fought with them a lot? Yeah. Right. Okay. Could have been, could have been any, any group. Coming in down on they said. And she says to him, I told you we should have went with the cloud. <laughs> huh? We should have stuck with the plow. We should have went when everybody else went. No, you're the one that said you didn't want to move. Okay. But those kind of things happen. But listen, folks, God wants to take us from A to B. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. He doesn't want us to stay at A. He doesn't want us to stay at B. He wants us to grow in different levels yes. of what He has for us spiritually. Right. In our walk with Him. Yeah. Now, I remember when I when I first got saved. I, I, I tell you, <laughs> uh, I you, you were talking about it in high school or in school that you always had your Bible with you. Right. I didn't carry a red Bible around, but I did quit fighting about half as much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for some of us, it's a little more progressive, right? right. Right. I said it's a little more progressive. It's all right, yeah. Huh? Amen. So, so, you know, I, I, but God was doing something right. in me. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I didn't know this woman until the night I got saved. The night I got saved, her dad, mom, and my two sisters prayed me through at the altar. Amen. Uh -huh. 1963. <laughs> July 28th. <laughs> Watsonville, California. Amen. PYPA service. If you don't know what that is, then you haven't been in PCG too long. <laughs> huh? It's a youth service. It's the only place my dad would let me go. Yeah. Was church because I was in trouble because I wasn't had, didn't have a very good weekend. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Huh? So let's move off of that. Anyway, God by His presence takes us from one point to another point. Yeah. As we stay in His Word, as we keep continuing praying, I never had in mind when I got saved that night that I would ever be a preacher. Mm -hmm. Never passed it through my mind. Never did. But God had purpose yeah. for me when I was in my mother's womb. Yeah. I know there were a few times she probably said, Dear Lord, can anything good come out of this one? <laughs> huh? You know, you know what I'm talking about. You mamas know what I'm talking about. With some of your kids. And uh, a lot of problems. But God, by the power of His Spirit, yes. began to mold and began to shape me once I got saved. Yeah. He began to take me on. I wasn't perfect. Like I said, I, I quit fighting about half as much at school. But God took, you know, took all that out of me too. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't rise up in me. There's sometimes I get so upset that uh, you know this Tabasco sauce starts on my feet. And start coming <laughs> up. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever pastor pastors, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. They're so precious, my wife says, and she's right. They are precious. Most of them. And uh, <laughs> I can't fool you. You know that. Yeah. You know, all of us have, have issues, different issues at different right. times. Amen. Yeah. But I want us to I want us to look at this a little bit closer here. Whenever it talks about it talks about here the uh, letting God arise and letting his enemies be scattered, let those that hate him flee before him. When we see that we begin to understand some things that God, by the power of His Holy Spirit, you know, and just in plain language, He's He's saying, you know, up with God, up with God, yeah. up with God, and down with His enemies. Yeah, you can declare that yourself. Amen. No, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, succumb to the what the enemy wants me to do. Come on. Or what the issue is physically, right. spiritually, or financially in my life. I'm not going to succumb to that. Yeah. 
up with God and down with the enemies. Yes. And you know, then it says the adversaries run for the hills. That's what he's saying. Amen. He said they're running for the hills. When you when God rises up, when God is up, I, I'm telling you, the enemy will run for the hills. That's right. Amen. God's never lost a battle. Don't think he has. Come on. Amen. You say, well, I don't know that the Israelites have. Yeah, they have. And most of the time it's because of disobedience. Come on. Yeah. Disobedience on their part. Yeah. And and uh, you know it talks about as uh, as the as the wind blows in that in that verse of scriptures it talks about the, the wind blowing and it talks about those different things like the wax melts before the fire at the presence of God huh and the wickedness smells at the presence of God poof they're gone huh yeah. wicked listen we sometimes think when we see the word wickedness in the scripture we ought, we automatically think of people that don't know God mm -hmm. but how many of you know that there's some wickedness in all of us that still needs to melt before God. Right. Come on. Yes. I said, come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Paul the Apostle wouldn't have said what he said right. when he declared it. And he, and he said this. Um, actually, I think it was, yeah, yeah, it was Paul or John. He was one of those guys. Anyway, he said this. He said, do not speak evil of anyone. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But have you talked evil about anybody this last week? Come on. It's hard, it's hard not to do, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. It's hard not to do that. Am I right about that? Yes. Amen. Even the best drummer in Southern California. That's good. That's not easy. It's not easy to do. But that's the command from the word. Amen. 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 Don't speak evil of anyone. And I haven't mastered it yet. God's helping me. Maybe yeah. I'll help each other. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How many of you know you need to have somebody that you're accountable to? Amen. All right, even in, the, in things like that. And it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor or not, or a bishop or whatever. Okay. Now notice what he goes on and says. I, I, I really love what he says here in, the, in this particular translation. It says that when the righteous see God in action, they'll laugh and they'll sing. Remember he said to rejoice. And again I say, then he, he said, goes on and says, and to rejoice exceedingly in the King James. But he said they'll laugh and they'll sing. He said they'll laugh and they'll sing for joy. For joy. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Sing hymns to God. Yeah. Amen? Sing hymns to God. All heaven, sing out. Clear the way for the coming of the cloud rider. Yes. How many of you know that it says that he rides upon the clouds in that in the King James Version? Yeah. He rides upon the clouds. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yes. Thank God for it. He said, make way for the cloud rider. He was in the cloud. He said, enjoy God. You know what? Most people that are even Christians don't enjoy God. Amen. Because they think they think he's ready to smack them in the head if they do wrong. Right. right. But God, God's good to us. Yes, he is. He's good to yes. us. Amen. 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 I'm not saying nothing bad should ever happen to you, but I'm telling you this, whatever issue it is that you're faced with, whether it's a, a, a financial disruption, I know where you were. Gail and I, it wasn't because that we were divorced, but there were other things that happened to us in the first part of our ministry that I didn't think I'd ever preach anymore. There wasn't anything immoral between either one of us. I mean, her was somebody else and me was somebody else. It had to do how I was treated. Amen. Come on. Amen. Poor little me. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It had to do, and it could be anything. Right, come on. It can absolutely be anything. Gil and I have, we, we've never thought about divorce. Murder. But. <laughs> <laughs> She tried to leave me one time and I said, 
right? You're going to live with a 250 pound man on your back. <laughs> <laughs> she decided not to leave. <laughs> she wasn't leaving because of stuff between us. It was other stuff. Anyway, uh, but, but we have to understand that God, by the power of His Holy Spirit, is directing our paths with His presence. Right. Amen. The Holy Spirit that lives yes. in you. Yes. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're the ark now. Go ahead and tell them. Yeah. You're the ark. Yeah. You're the ark. Yeah. You're the ark. Yeah. You carry His presence. Right. You know You know He's on the inside of you. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you got saved, He came to live. And then if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a fullness of His Spirit yes. that comes into your life. Amen. Amen. And giving you a heavenly language. Yes. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. So we understand that. We know that. But here's, here's an amazing thing. You say, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever really sensed God's presence. You know, I kind of get, you know, the chicken skin sometimes, but... I'm not sure which one. Songs are going good. And I tell you what, you do a great job leading worship too, Pastor. I'm not just I'm not saying it to blow them up. Good job. Good job. And all the musicians, wow. Amen. They're great. Uh, and and I, I don't mean this in a, in any kind of degrading way. In a church this size to have the musicians that you have here. Amen. 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 To lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. It's amazing. I know, I know churches that have three times this, and they don't have the music and the worship and the and the they don't. So don't take it for granted, folks. Amen. Don't take it for granted. Thank God for it on a daily basis. For your pastors and for the musicians that you have here. And even the young man that sat back there, he's doing a good job. How many of you noticed I whispered something in all their ears? Yes. Uh, you know what I said to them? I said basically the same thing to every one of them. I said, you're a good son. Amen. To the boys. To the girls, I said, you're good daughters. Amen. You're a good daughter. And there's a reason I do that. But I'm not going to get into that now. If God leaves me later, I'm going to come back. I'll, I'll talk about it sometime in the future. Okay? There's a reason I do that. They need to know that. Yeah. Just let me tell you, parents, even if you're a single parent, you need to tell your kids they're good kids. Yeah. But they're not. They're always. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I would have heard that one time, I never heard it. Until my dad, on his dying death, he did it. Is dying. Yeah. I've heard it from my dad. Yeah. But you need you need to tell them that they're good. Yeah. You know why they're good? Because God says they're good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now goodness, our goodness doesn't get us to heaven. Right. But God, if God is a good God and He created us, then He created something good. Now, we may be going the wrong direction. We may be taking a detour. Come on. Your kids may be in a detour zone right now. Yeah. But just keep praying for them and believing God for them. Amen. They'll come back. Yeah. I said they'll come back. Amen. Yeah. So the presence of God is the most important thing in your life. The presence and His Word. The Spirit and the Word agree. Yeah. You won't find that in Scripture as far as a word, a Scripture saying, the Spirit and the Word agree. You won't find that. But you see it in principle all through the Scripture. The Spirit of God and His Word will always agree. Yeah. It will never disagree. Right. Amen? Amen? And here's why I know, here's why I know that you can you can actually sense the manifested presence of God if you'll wait upon the Lord. Amen. Now that word wait, you know, we were singing that song. They wait upon the Lord, shall renew his strength. Mount up with wings as eagles, running, not be weary, walking, not faint. Did you notice there's no place to stop? Uh, yeah. You can fly. You can run. You can walk. But don't stop. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you? would really, really 
want to sense the presence of God in your life. Amen. I'm talking about manifested presence. I'm not talking about Him showing up and, you know, stand in front of you. I'm just talking about you know His presence is in you. Yes. 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 Good. Good. That's most of it. I remember when I pastored Milton Home for 22 years. If you don't know where that's at, San Diego's a suburb of Milton Home. I'd go out to the, and I, I had a crew of guys working for me at the time. Most of the money into the church because the church needed the money. And I guarantee you, your pastors do the same thing. But there came a day when we didn't have to do that. And there's coming a day real soon, you're not going to have to do that, Pastor. Amen. Not that there's anything wrong with you giving. If you're being blessed, I believe that. But there's plenty of provision. For this church, I, I believe you can get into a bigger building yes. if you've got to knock that wall out. Whatever God, God can move you to a bigger place. Yeah. I believe it because you're you're at capacity right now, whether you know it or not. You're at capacity. Any time that you have with the kids all in here and everybody in here, and you have. At least 75 to 80 percent of your seats filled, which you do. People don't like to be crowded. But, Pastor, I'm speaking it prophetically to you. God will make the way because He's the way maker. Amen. He's the way maker. Believe it. Hallelujah. It's his promise. Mark it down today. Always say 11. Mark it down. He's going to make a way. We need you. We need a church like this here. We need a church like on Rosedale Avenue where it's at. We need one out in Shafter like a dance. We need one in Wasco. Like that church. Because they touch people you don't. Right. right. Amen. Amen. Keep that in mind. This church is touching people that nobody else will touch. They're coming in. I believe it. Let me get back to my story. When I get up early in the morning, I go out, get up, and I get, go out about 5 o'clock or maybe earlier. And I'm saying this to say you need to do this. I'm just saying if you want to sense the presence of God, get yourself alone. Somewhere. The first part of the day is the best time because your mind's not cluttered. That is the way it is for me. Maybe, you're, maybe your mind's uncluttered all the time. I don't know. <laughs> But I know if I get started, I get I get things going in my mind. Yeah. They get they get going, and they're important things. But there's nothing more important than you spending time in the presence of God. That's it. Amen. Nothing more important. Amen. And I would just sit down on the carpet and lean up against the front row pews, and I would just start. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I wasn't asking him for anything. I was just telling him how much I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. And it's not long. I mean, it's not long until I would sense his presence. Yes. yes. Amen. And it wasn't just in the front and the altar part church. Right. It was all through the church. And I had, had one guy, he was my assistant pastor. He was a border patrol agent. 
And it was from time to time he'd be able to join me. And he walked in one time when the presence of God was so thick, I felt like I could cut it with a knife. And he said, he always took his belt, his gun belt off and laid it on the cube right in the side door when he came in. Laid it down and he just stopped in his tracks. And I looked at him and he said, the presence of God is so strong here. Hallelujah. I said, come on over here and be a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know? Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you that because that's what I did. I'm telling you that's what God will do. Yes, yes. We'll put ourselves in a position where we're saying, God, I love you. Yes. I'm not coming here in order to ask you for anything. I'm just coming here to tell you that I love you. And I, I would begin to just make up songs and sing them. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. And just worship Him. Yes, God. yes. Amen. Just loving God. Yeah. Love God. And His presence will come. And you know what? I can, I can almost guarantee you. That sounds like a used car salesman. But I can almost guarantee you <laughs> that every time, not every time, but most every time, His presence will come. Amen. Amen. If we'll just quiet ourselves. Right. They that wait upon the Lord. You know what the word wait means there? Sometimes we think it's, oh, well, we'll just sit around and wait on God. Just waiting on God. I've heard guys say that. How's it going? Well, I'm just waiting on God. If you're going to wait, you're going to serve. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Because the word wait, where, where does waiter come from? Waitress come from? Server. Huh? Yeah. If you wait before the Lord, it doesn't mean that you're idle. It means that you're that you're involved in something, that you're working for Him, that you're serving Him. And your daily job, Pastor, when you're out there cutting the lawn, I'd almost, I don't know, I'm going to say it again. I'd almost guarantee that you sense the presence of God when you're behind one of those moors. Huh? See, still serving God, still loving God, still worshiping God. Huh? Got his earphones on. Probably the noise down. That's music. Music, yeah. Probably worship music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you can you can be in the presence of God when you're doing your job. Yeah. Amen. I want to encourage you. Let God arise. Yes. Let his enemies be scattered. And let all those that hate him flee before him. Yes. Let the wickedness melt at the presence of God. Yes. Yes. Rejoice in him. Yes. And rejoice in him exceedingly. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. The word rejoice means to spin. We sung the words. About dancing and yeah. all those different yeah. things that was in that song. Yeah. I didn't see too many of you cutting a rug. Yeah. <laughs> Probably for the same reason I didn't. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <clears throat> I really could just do a knee twist, but you know, <laughs> that was me <BC>. see. <laughs> But, but but you can it, actually rejoicing means to jump up and spin around. Yeah. Jump up and spin around. Now I used to do that all the time. But now if I spin around and get halfway around, man, I'm dizzy. <laughs> That's about it. You know, it's about it. But God knows my heart and He knows yours. Yeah. And that's the main thing. I said that's the main thing. <clears throat> Father, your love is great. Your mercy is great. These people, Father God, they have a hunger for you. They have a hunger for your word. Father God, these pastors that you have set in their midst, that you've placed in their hearts a calling to plant this church, we believe you, Father God, that your word is true and that the grace of God is going to be over this place and cover this place. Yes. The enemies can do what they want, but you will arise. You will come to the point, Father God, where the enemies will have to scatter. 
And people that drive by this place, they're going to sense your presence as they drive by. As they walk close to it. In the name of Jesus, they're going to know that there's something different about this place. And it is your presence and your power and your grace. When these people pass somebody at Walmart or wherever they shop, Father, that the people that pass by them are going to know that there's something different about them. They may not know it's your presence, but it is your presence. Yes. Because you live within them, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that you're making, you're making a way where there seems to be no way in everyone's life that's in this place today. Bless the ladies, those that are out there teaching and, and ministering to the children, Father God. Do a work in them, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Lift them up in your name, Jesus. Help us to be a witness in your name. With your head still bowed for just a moment. If you're in this place and you maybe you've been away from God for a while. Maybe you just you know, you're kind of like uh, kind of like Abby and his family. You just kind of you, you've hung back from church. You've hung back from, from the presence of God. God wants you to draw near. Yes. To draw near. It's like, it's like Gail said this morning about the sunflower. When it when it's dark outside or when it's foggy outside they close in towards each other. We need you, Father God, but we also know that we need one another. Yes. We need one another. We need the house of God. We need the encouragement. We need the strength from each one that's here. So if you're in this place and you need the strength of God because you've been way, way away from the presence of God for a long time, just uh, keep your heads bowed for just a moment, please. If you're here, just raise your hand right where you're at. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God loves you. He cares for you. Amen. Gave his son for you. Shed his blood for you.